Welcome to This Week in Astrology. This is episode number 565 for December 21 through 27, 2020. One of the decade's most auspicious astrological aspects, the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, headlines the week. The fact that these two planets are coming together in the first degree of Aquarius bodes well for the incoming age of Aquarius. This momentous event is made even more potent because it happens just hours after the winter solstice, the beginning of the astrological new year. This week also features Mars square Pluto, a peaking grand cross, radiating service and compassion, and eight bonus aspects. Wow, busy week. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm your host, Benjamin Bernstein, broadcasting from thisweekinastrology.com. I simultaneously record these weekly forecasts as audio and video, so you can choose whichever format you prefer. The video version includes detailed chart graphics, which you can also see in my written forecasts at astroshaman.com. This Week in Astrology is honored to be one of the internet's top 10 astrology podcasts. Check out our website where you can hear the show and subscribe to podcast updates. And if you have not already, be sure to click the link in the show notes for two chances to win a free Astrology Plus session with me each month. As we come into this week, we've got a waxing moon and Uranus is still retrograde through January 14. We also have a four-month Grand Cross continuing through March 18 that we've been discussing on previous shows. So let's get into it. Monday, December 21, the big day. First off, the sun enters Capricorn at 5.02 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This marks the winter solstice, the astrological new year. For the next six months, each day we'll have a little more sunlight. Of course, winter solstice refers to the northern hemisphere. Let's start by interpreting the sun in Capricorn. For the next month, this can help you be more mature and responsible. You can plan the work and work the plan, manage your time well, and be more productive. If you have enough life experience, you can step into the role of the wise elder. The most exciting news about this winter solstice is that it's followed just a few hours later by the Jupiter-Saturn Great Conjunction. That interpretation follows immediately after this one, but let's stick with the 2020 winter solstice chart for now. In astrology, seasonal charts for the solstices and equinoxes give an overview of the energy for at least the next three months. The winter solstice chart incorporates a four-month grand cross that peaks on Christmas Day. This is timely since this aspect pattern radiates the Christ-like energies of service and compassion. As it turns out, I will be discussing that grand cross in more detail in this very podcast. So hang on, and when we get to the Christmas Day part, I will be telling you more about that. What I will tell you right now is that Grand Cross is augmented in the winter solstice chart by the Piscean moon conjunct Neptune. This lets you be more empathically sensitive and more easily guided by intuitive feelings in your heart chakra. Aspects. The winter solstice chart contains several notable aspects that flavor the next three months. First off, there's a tight Sun-Mercury conjunction. With Mercury in the first degree of Capricorn, this highlights the opportunity for new learning, teaching, or writing, especially about practical matters with measurable outcomes. Or you could just put new energy into learning or teaching about the same things as before. The Capricorn wise elder theme could also come into play. This winter solstice chart has a Pisces moon, semi-square Uranus, conjunct Neptune, and sextile Pluto. That's all three outer planets. This can help you be more empathically sensitive to the divine energies of these three transpersonal planets. The more open you keep your heart, the more you'll feel the energy of the cosmos. If you so choose, this can help you align more easily with whatever service the universe asks of you. Chiron squares the Sun and Mercury and trines Venus. He also sextiles Jupiter and Saturn and quintiles Pluto. All these Chiron aspects are likely to stir up some old wounds and traumas, so have a good shadow work tool ready. My free healing invocation has helped thousands process challenging energies quickly and efficiently. When I mentioned that in my awakening invocation, if you just go to astroshaman.com, the last word on the menu bar is invocations. Click in there and you can learn all about these free tools. This strong Chiron stimulation can also energize your service as a healer and or mentor. 
Uranus aspects every planet through Saturn except Mars in the winter solstice chart and makes minor heart aspects to the lunar nodes. That's a lot of Uranus. This puts massive emphasis on the Uranus Aquarius archetype since Saturn and Jupiter just entered Aquarius and will make their great conjunction later today. Uranus and Aquarius do have the same astrological meaning. You'd be wise to focus on the three positive expressions of the Uranus Aquarius archetype. First, embody and express your unique human self. Second, follow your intuitive hits. And third, serve others using the special gifts that you most love to use. The more you activate the high side of this archetype, the less energy it will have to bother you with its challenging manifestations. And what are those? Anything in your outer life that is not optimized for your soul purpose may be thrown into chaos or disarray. Release what does not serve you and heal what can be fixed. Internally, you might feel anxious, agitated, nervous, or irritable. Many people are initially astonished that my free embodied awakening invocation can immediately eliminate these symptoms as well as all other challenging emotions and mental chatter. But if they keep using the invocation, they quickly become accustomed to the new normal, living in a flowing state of harmony, ease, and grace. Again, that's mentioned in the show notes and at astroshaman.com invocations on the menu bar. The Great Conjunction. One of the decade's most important astrological events, the Great Conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, happens here on December 21st at 1.20 p.m. plus 30 seconds. Jupiter and Saturn are conjunct at zero degrees, 29 minutes Aquarius. I owe a great debt of gratitude to the world-renowned astrologer Ray Merriman, whose outstanding article on this subject, The Great Mutation and the Start of a New Era, Jupiter and Saturn, is the foundation for this great conjunction forecast. There's a link to his post in the show notes. The Jupiter-Saturn conjunction happens every 20 years. This year, it's happening about eight hours after the winter solstice and on the same day. Proximity may increase power, and we haven't had a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction this close to the Earth since 1623. It will be visible to the naked eye and will look like one planet. This is one of the most celebrated celestial omens in ancient astrology. In fact, it was their most important event. Back in those times, they didn't know about anything beyond Saturn. When the two slowest planets they knew about, Jupiter and Saturn, came together, it was the biggest deal of all. In fact, many believe that the star of Bethlehem, which lit up the ancient night sky in 7 BC, was a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in the spiritual sign of Pisces. The fact that today's great conjunction is happening at zero degrees Aquarius really gets my attention. There are lots of different opinions about when the Aquarian age starts. I can't imagine a more potent indicator than this great conjunction shining forth in Aquarius's very first degree. As if that was not enough new beginning energy, this happens on the same day as the winter solstice. Many consider the winter solstice the start of the astrological new year, since it's the moment when each day starts to have more light. Of course, this solstice is also only a few days shy of January 1st, New Year's Day on our Gregorian calendar. Now, this is not to say that there's been no Aquarian energy so far. Obviously, the energy of this area made a dramatic entrance in the 1960s. Hair, the American tribal love rock musical, which debuted in 1967, even spawned a hit song about the age of Aquarius. You might have heard it. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Age of, you know, I didn't quite get the pitch right, but you get the idea. This Aquarian energy is widely known as the New Age movement, which has been steadily blossoming ever since. Things like meditation and yoga, which seemed weird and radical to many in the 60s, have now become mainstream. The changing of an age does not happen all at once. The age of Aquarius had a major kickstart in the 1960s, thanks to that decade's mighty Uranus Pluto conjunction. Today's great conjunction will give the Aquarian Age another major energy boost. After this, we should see the consciousness of love and light spreading more rapidly and universally. And I'll just throw in an extra here. Uh, sometimes people ask me, well, when will the Age of Aquarius really kick in for real? And when I ask my guides that question, they say, hey, it's up to you humans. And when enough of you wake up and you walk around in your beautiful awakened selves in your human body, then the tipping point will come and you'll have your Aquarian age. So each one of us makes that happen. Just a quick side note there. 
So can Saturn play well with Aquarius and Uranus? I already interpreted Saturn entering Aquarius in my December 17 forecast last week, but it seems appropriate to share a few additional thoughts here. Saturn's placement in Aquarius could be challenging. Saturn represents what's old and traditional, while Aquarius electrifies what's new, radical, or modern. The Aquarian vibe is even stronger because this great conjunction squares Uranus. Uranus carries the same archetypal energy as Aquarius. Interestingly, Saturn and Uranus both rule Aquarius. Saturn's the ancient ruler, Uranus is the modern ruler. Saturn represents establishment, government, and control. Uranus represents the collective and the populace, as well as freedom, independence, and individuality. Uranus also represents mass protests, revolutions, and great social unrest. We've certainly had no shortage of this in 2020, and we can expect a lot more in 2021. What ups the ante even more is that this isn't just a great conjunction, it's a great mutation. A great mutation occurs every 200 years when the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction series moves into a different element. Roughly speaking, there are 10 cycles of 20-year great conjunctions in each element. Those, of course, are fire, earth, air, and water. Right now, the great mutation is shifting from earth to air. Why am I roughly speaking? Because a typical 200-year great mutation cycle starts with eight great conjunctions in the same element. The ninth is a preview in the next element, while the 10th returns to the prior element. After this, the great mutation cycle starts again with eight great conjunctions in the new element. Most recently, we had eight great conjunctions in Earth. These were followed by an air great conjunction in 1980 and one last Earth conjunction in 2000. Today, we begin a series of eight air conjunctions. This great mutation air cycle will last through 2159. The Earth element favors the accumulation of wealth and power in controlled settings. Air is more free and enjoys artistic, creative, and intellectual expressions. Innovative ideas can be celebrated. As we'll see below, this doesn't happen all at once, but takes years to phase in. This transition from Earth to air could also see capitalism giving way to socialism or one of its hybrids. This could include terrifying outcomes such as <gasps> guaranteed free health care for all instead of America's current profit-based model that lets millions of uninsured or underinsured people suffer or die. We can do better than some of the flawed socialist societies we've seen so far, which preach equitable distribution, but really concentrate wealth at the top. The healthiest expression of Aquarius supports inspired individual expression that helps the collective thrive. The blind pursuit of individual and corporate wealth, the relentless accumulation of property and power, has resulted in the environment going to hell and massive inequality in our social structures. This service to self juggernaut has created an extinction event that endangers humanity itself. This is the first great mutation in air signs since 1226. The biggest event of that cycle was the Renaissance. Humanity emerged from the stagnant and corrupt Middle Ages into an extraordinary flowering of culture and creativity. In the air cycle that starts today, we already have an extraordinary renaissance in communications. After the first air sign great conjunction in 1980, we saw the rise of the internet. It took years to phase in, but really started taking off in the mid 90s. Now in late 2020, free international video calling is commonplace. It no longer even seems remarkable that we can instantly stream or download just about any movie, TV show, album, or book ever created. This air cycle will also be marked by stunning advances in technology. We already have self-driving cars, AI face recognition, and private space companies. Yesterday's science fiction has become today's reality, and we're just getting warmed up. Technology is moving at such a breathtaking pace that, according to many business experts, most of today's jobs will not exist in 10 years. We're entering a time of radical change and not a moment too soon. Nothing less than radical change will avert our current crisis. We're nothing less than the survival of most of the planet's species, including ourselves, is at stake. The energy of this Jupiter-Saturn conjunction is extraordinary. 
it initiates not only a 20 year great conjunction, but a 200 year great mutation. There has not been a Jupiter Saturn conjunction this close to Earth in almost 400 years. It happens hours after the winter solstice and it happens in the first degree of Aquarius, the sign of the new golden age we're moving into. This is an amazing amount of new beginning energy. So what's your role in all this? Astrological energy is inherently neutral. Whether it expresses positively or negatively is up to us. So use your imagination. What kind of life-affirming, awe-inspiring world can we create together? How can you manifest this more wonderful reality in your own life right now? Aquarius rules intuitive flashes. Are you getting intuitive hits about the things you can do to help co-create this awesome new age? Are you stepping into the highest expression of Aquarius using your special gifts and talents in ways that delight you to serve the collective? Don't wait for some external authority to tell you what to do, including me. Your own inner wisdom, those intuitive knowings that resonate in your bones and your gut is your most reliable guidance system. Your higher self sends down these intuitive hits. It created your human self and knows your optimal course of action at every moment. I've asked hundreds of my clients about intuition. Everyone has affirmed that even if they encounter initial difficulty, they ultimately get better results when they follow it. Do you want to live your most satisfying life, fulfill your life purpose and help bring in the new Aquarian age? Your optimal strategy is to follow your intuition. I, I kind of cheated on this. I've ad lived it earlier, but I'll say this because it's in my scripture. When will the Aquarian age fully arrive? When I ask my inner wisdom, it tells me that the timing is in our hands. When enough of us make this new level of consciousness our new normal, we'll hit a magical tipping point. Then the Aquarian age will spread across the planet like an ecstatic tidal wave. You are just as responsible for bringing in this new golden age as anyone else. If you're not already doing your part, when will you start? How about now? I have a couple of resources. These will be in the show notes, but I want to mention them too. If you're not sure how to take your Aquarian age consciousness to the next level, uh, there's a marvelous book by Charles Eisenstein. It's called The More Beautiful World Our Hearts Know Is Possible. And I've already mentioned my invocations, but uh, you can totally accelerate your healing, awakening, and intuition with my invocations. And again, if you just go to the show notes and click the link there or go to astroshaman.com, last word on the menu bar is invocations. Click that and it will tell you about the free six-part invocation masterclass that you are welcome to check out. Uh, I've given this now for 10 years to thousands of people and for most of them, it works like a charm. Embodied awakening comes right in. Whatever is stirred up and bothering them flushes away. And the nature of the process is the more you do your good shadow work and clear away the heavy stuff, the more you wake up. A beautiful process. All right, so uh, we've got uh, some major stuff already happening, obviously, on Monday, December 21, winter solstice, Jupiter Saturn conjunction, but we have one more little aspect to talk about Venus quincunx Uranus. Venus is at seven Sagittarius, and Uranus is at seven Taurus. So I'm not going to go super deep on this, but let's take Venus as a relationship. Uranus likes to shake up things. So uh, Quincunx's adjustment with this aspect, watch your relationships and see if there's any, um, you know, things getting stirred up that are a little challenging and ask yourself, what adjustment can I make? Also in creativity, which Venus also represents, it's a great time to try new stuff creatively. Maybe that you uh, are innovating or getting out of your old mold. And even financially, Venus represents money and it could say, well, maybe uh, if you get an intuitive hit or consider a uh, outside the box approach to your money stuff. So that's some basic ideas about how to use Venus quincunx Uranus. And now let's move on to Wednesday, December 23rd, Mars square Pluto. A Mars Pluto square, Mars 24 Aries, Pluto 24 Capricorn should always be handled with caution. Its dark expressions can be horrific, including extreme violence and sexual abuse. This is a good time to keep your distance from potentially violent people and dangerous situations. But such intense power can also be harnessed for good. This square can give you tremendous power to strive for a worthy cause or step into your personal power. You could initiate a new project or pour fresh energy 
into an existing one. Mars and Pluto are the two planets of sex, so this aspect can help you enjoy more erotic pleasure, or you could explore the soul-blended ecstasy of sacred sex, which Pluto holds the energy of. Also on Wednesday, December 23rd, we have Mercury square Chiron. Mercury is at five Aries. Chiron is at, oh, I'm sorry, I misspoke that. Mercury is actually at five Capricorn and Chiron is at five Aries. Mercury and Chiron have something in common. Mercury is all about the mind and learning and teaching. Chiron is the mentor. So this is a very charged energy for learning or sharing helpful information broadly. Um, Mercury square Chiron also if you're holding thoughts that are creating wounding, uh, often our emotional challenges are based upon a thought that is toxic. Watch your thoughts. And if you say, wow, I'm holding a thought that's not helping me, ask yourself, is that true? Can I be absolutely sure it's true? This is the work of Byron Katie I'm referencing. And who would I be without that thought? That's one of the great side benefits of embodied awakening. You have an automatic witness to your thought field. And instead of just believing every thought that comes through and being swept around by them, your witness can say, oh, there's an interesting thought. Is that really true? Is that challenging thought that's making me feel bad? Uh, do I just need to take that as a given or can I question that and even clear it from my field? Okay, Thursday, December 24th, we have Mercury quintile Neptune. Mercury is at six Capricorn, Neptune is at 18 Pisces. Uh, this is lovely because here we have Mercury again, the mental field, the mind. Neptune is the divine flow of constant energy and information. Quintile is a magical fairy dust kind of aspect. So this actually gives you a chance to more easily receive information intuitively and not have to work so hard mentally. And with Mercury and Capricorn, this can be super practical. I mean, wouldn't it be great to have uh, a stream of information coming in to help you do practical productive things. With Mercury and Capricorn, Quintile, Neptune, that's totally possible. Uh, this could even be a channeling aspect where all of a sudden you're just sharing information you didn't even know the minute before. So there's some beautiful ways to use the Mercury, Neptune, Quintile. Let's get on to Christmas Day, December 25th on Friday. Grand crosses usually breed challenge, but this one has a huge potential for soul-aligned compassion, unconditional love, and service to a higher cause. It includes Vesta, Neptune, and the lunar nodes. It started way back on November 19th and has its first peak today on Christmas Day. It peaks again on February 15th and ends on March 18th. Why so long? The double peak is due to Vesta stationing retrograde partway through this process. Vesta represents support for a higher cause that does not directly benefit you. Neptune radiates unconditional love and compassion, energies that were so radiantly embodied by Jesus. The lunar nodes represent life purpose, plus they're in the axis of communication, north node in Gemini, south node in Sagittarius. This suggests that part of your service to this cause might include spreading the word about it, learning more about it is also supported. On Friday, December 25th, we have another bonus aspect, Mercury trying Uranus. Boy, Mercury is pretty active this week. So Mercury and Uranus are a natural pairing. Mercury is the lower octave, Uranus is the higher octave. Mercury is human mind, Uranus is divine mind. Try an easy, smooth, comfortable connection. Just an easy way to get lots of intuitive flashes, brilliant original thinking. Mercury's in Capricorn still. So again, these intuitive hits might have very practical and uh, productive applications. Let's go on to Saturday, December 26th, another bonus aspect, Sun square Chiron. Sun is at five Capricorn, Chiron's at five Aries. This is a good time to uh, get some shadow work done. Uh, the square tends to be challenged for growth. Chiron is the wounded healer, the sun is you. So um, if you get triggered uh, here around the Christmas holiday week, um, just get a good shadow work tool going. You may have one that works well for you already, uh, a lot of people really love my healing invocation. I've already referenced the invocation several times. Basically, you delegate the healing to your higher self. You actually just say the seven words, maximum healing that serves highest good, please. Rest attention wherever the pain is, physically or emotionally. And your divine comes right in, stirs it up and flushes it out if you stay passive. That's really what it boils down to. So uh, check that out if you're interested. Again, there's a link to that in the show notes. On Sunday, December 27, we have Sun Quintal Neptune. The Sun's at six Capricorn, Neptune is at 18 Pisces. This is a lovely setup in a lot of ways. The Sun, of course, is you. Neptune is 
the planet of spiritual awakening and inspired creativity. Quintile, again, is that magical fairy dust kind of connection. So it's just for starters, a wonderful aspect for spiritual work and doing creative work. Um, this also can be really great for operating in flow state where time disappears and you're just smoothly doing what you're doing without much effort, it seems, and can be good for dream interpretation as well. Now, the sun's in Capricorn, and that actually juices us up for law of attraction, a Capricorn sun, quintile Neptune. In this context, Neptune says, I visualize, I imagine. Saturn says, I crystallize, I make it real. And that really makes law of attraction a really easy thing to do. That's the idea that the universe we live in is really a hologram, powerfully influenced by the thoughts. And if you hold a thought with your visualizing very in very great detail what you want and you're putting a lot of motion into it and you do this with some frequency then it can start showing up in your outer world now you still may need to do some things physically out there but um, that tends to accelerate the manifestation process finally let's talk about on sunday december 27 the sun trine uranus sun is at seven capricorn uranus is at seven taurus and this just makes it easier to catch all those great Uranian things I talked about earlier, the sun again representing yourself. Uh, this makes it easier to be your authentic self, admit to, at least to yourself who and what you are and show it to the world as appropriate. Uh, it should make it easier to catch intuitive flashes. And of course, as I said earlier in this forecast, Uranus wants you to serve the world using your authentic gifts that you most love to use. Some great ways to use the sun Uranus trine on Sunday, December 27. Now, again, obviously the headline for this week is the Great Conjunction, and I'm doing a meditation this Monday to celebrate that. That's December 21. I'm recording this on Saturday the 19th, so there is still time, hopefully, for you to learn about this and catch it. If you miss it, then this will be archived for members of Awakening Plus. In the Awakening Plus membership, you can learn about that stuff at awakeningplus.com, but I'm getting way ahead of myself here. In fact, let me just tell you about the upcoming Awakening Plus events, including that one. Everyone is welcome to participate in many Awakening Plus events on Zoom for free. These events support your individual healing and awakening, as well as global spiritual awakening. Starting this month in December, there are some private events for Awakening Plus members only, but you can easily become a member with our 30 days for $1 risk-free trial membership. Here are our remaining December events. And the one I just mentioned, the Great Conjunction Aquarian Age Meditation on Monday, December 21, will be starting at 1244 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. This meditation will help support the blossoming age of Aquarius. We'll create our sacred container, invoke embodied awakening, and then we'll offer ourselves in support of the final buildup to the historic Jupiter-Saturn Great Conjunction at 1.20 p.m. plus 30 seconds U.S. Eastern Time. We will follow divine guidance as to how we can best support that moment, as well as what we're called to do after that once we wrap up, which of course will also be guided by the inner flow that guides us when we do this sort of work. We'll close and have a discussion and Q&A. Again, the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction is one of the most powerful astrological events of the decade. There's going to be a huge numbers of others meditating at the same time around the world in support of this event. The energy should be spectacular. And I'm guessing that our event here, here in the Awakening Plus will be about 90 minutes. Again, that's free and open to everybody. And there's links to that in the show notes and at astroshaman.com homepage, fourth section down. Another free public event. We've got intuitive Reiki healing uh, with guest presenter Lorraine Jones. That'll be Tuesday, December 22nd, 8 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. The benefits you could receive from Lorraine Jones' intuitive Reiki healing event are practically limitless. Possibilities include healing, clarity and peace, joy, enlightenment and empowerment, stress reduction and relaxation. This subtle but powerful process could help you heal physical, emotional and karmic challenges as well as blocked, stagnant, or imbalanced energy flows. Your energetic and subtle bodies can be cleared, balanced, repaired, and energized. This will help your life force energy flow in a more healthy and natural way. Lorraine will help you connect with divine spirit, your higher self, and your guides. This will support whatever healing serves your highest good and the highest good of all affected by this magical process. And here's some stuff I haven't told you about her before on previous podcasts. Uh, Lorraine has delved deeply into the healing and spiritual arts. She is a 
certified Kundalini Reiki Grand Master Practitioner, a certified Gold Reiki Master Practitioner, a Litarian Reiki Healer, a Ra Seki Kemetic Reiki Practitioner, a certified Infinity Healing Practitioner, a certified Spiritual Life Coach, a certified instructor of Thef Neteru Sema Pout, which is ancient Egyptian Kemetic Yoga, she also works with tarot, crystals, herbs, sound, nature, energy, aromatherapy, emotions, spirit, her higher self, and the most high. I've known Lorraine for a long time. She really holds a super high vibration, and I'm really looking forward to her free public event. Let me also mention that every week we do an event called New Earth Support Team. Uh, now we're routinely attracting over 50 people. Now, normally we do this on Thursdays at 8 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, but for the rest of December, will be on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We're making this change, obviously, because of Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. In this popular event, we create our sacred container, invoke embodied awakening, and team up to help awaken the new earth. Our intention is always the same, but the divine keeps it fresh by providing endless variations on this amazing experience. Thankfully, one thing remains consistent, the personal spiritual upgrades and profound bliss we always receive. The event itself runs about an hour. We often hang out and chat for 20 to 30 minutes after that. That's an optional part of the process. Awakening Plus features at least eight live streaming events each month. Many live events are open to everyone for free. Members receive these exclusive benefits. Members only live calls, the archive of over 280 life transforming events, enlightening course content, including the complete 16 part invocation masterclass, two community connection calls per month, accountability partners, the forum, a lot of good juice there. You can learn more or to start your 30 days for $1 risk-free trial membership, go to awakeningplus.com. Thank you for being here. Once again, I'm Benjamin Bernstein with astroshaman.com. I can serve you with astrology readings, shamanic healing, awakening activation, astrological event timing, and one-of-a-kind life coaching. All my one-on-one -on -one services are equally effective in person or long distance. And during the pandemic, I've dropped my rates significantly. I also offer an unbeatable price on SolarFire, the number one astrology software for Windows. And as I mentioned, I run the Awakening Plus online membership for spiritual support. You can learn all about this and more at astroshaman.com. And to get those show notes I mentioned, just go to astroshaman.com slash 565. Please reach out if you have any questions. My email is astroshamanbenjamin at gmail.com. My number for voice and text, 828-338-9852. I'd love to connect with you. We are wrapping up. Please leave me a rating, review, or comment wherever you're getting this episode so others who also love astrology and spirituality can find it. Thanks again for spending this time with me. Stay safe, stay healthy. I wish you infinite blessings as the stars light your way.